Livewire gets hoodwinked by Wall Street. Livewire Group gets abandoned by investors as Harley-Davidson provides a $100 million backstop. How it went down. Harley-Davidson invested $100 million in an ABIC SPAC, ABIC SPAC. ABIC is the ticker symbol for the company that uh, <clears throat> had the $400 million uh, offshore company listed on the New York Stock Exchange was part of the SPAC. Besides the $100 million that Harley put in, Kimco, Taiwanese company, invests $100 million in the ABIC SPAC. And then Harley-Davidson provided an additional $100 million backstop at $10 a share. Now, what a backstop is, it's a promise to pay, in this case, $100 million to support the stock so that the original investors from ABIC can pull their money out if they want. So on September 26, 2022, Livewire listed on the New York Stock Exchange and ABIC investors exercised redemption rights to pull $368 million out of Livewire's trust account. Now, the reason I have investor and then in brackets the S is because it was mostly one investor. So in other words, <clears throat> one group one investor pulled out the majority of the $368 million out of the Livewire trust account. So the Livewire company, Livewire Group, netted $293.7 million and is now 89% or 89.4% owned by Harley Davidson, 4.9% owned by Kimco, and 4% by the ABIC spec founders. So what basically happened is Harley put in $200 million. Uh, Kimco put in 100 million, Livewire got 293 million, and uh, these other guys with a SPAC got 368 million. So that's a bad deal. That's a really bad deal. That's upside down and uh, not the way it's supposed to go. Uh, since the the public stock offering, or the, the since the IPO listing, Livewire has closed last Friday at six dollars fifty five cents, down 20. 0.61% since the listing in uh, September 26th and 27th. So uh, that's really, really a bad showing. It's a, it's, it's a train wreck. And uh, uh, let's look at what went wrong. The main thing that went wrong was bad market timing. Uh, a year ago, SPACs were doing great. Uh, since then, uh, most of the SPAC mergers, the investors pull out their money right away. So it really has turned out to be uh, not a good thing lately. <clears throat> Harley knew that uh, things were kind of uh, going you know, off the rails. All of the uh, indications were there. I think it kind of came down to a you know, do or die thing. Let's do it now before it's too late. But when they did the SPAC, it was too late. It was bad market timing. Uh, secondly, uh, they did the SPAC right after the federal government uh, put through incentives for electric cars and pulled out the incentives for electric motorcycles. Uh, that was because Joe Manchin was a, a, a swing vote in the Senate, and in order to get him to sign the in Inflation Reduction Act, which was the incentive package for electric cars, uh, he pulled out uh, motorcycles because he felt motorcycles were recreational vehicles, not really used for transportation, just recreational vehicles. So um, the United States is now the only major country that is incentivizing uh, cars and not motorcycles. Uh, they're doing it uh, all over the EU. They're doing it in the UK. Uh, they're even doing it in China. But in the United States, we have made the decision uh, to incentivize uh, cars, uh, but not incentivize motorcycles. So that's number two. And then the main thing and then the big thing and what I'm going to be talking about in this presentation mostly is Livewire failure, failed to convince investors that Del Mar and subsequent Livewire motorcycles will gain market acceptance. Um, they're looking at the situation and they're saying that they don't have any confidence that, um, you know, Livewire can, uh, can uh, pull off their business plan or can make it work or any confidence that anybody even has interest in electric motorcycles. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But I wanted to put a little uh, sunshine out there and talk about what went right. Uh, what, what went right 
is Livewire got a cash infusion of $293.7 million, which uh, they claim is enough to get them through uh, at least the next year. That's what they said in their SEC filing. And they also have the ability to uh, raise more money in future stock offerings uh, on the New York Stock Exchange when maybe market conditions are a little bit uh, more favorable. Of course, the downside is is they have a huge exposure now in expenses in having to do all of the regular SEC filings. And uh, they just recently filed, I think a couple days ago, for a special status as a new and emerging company so that they don't have to do quite as much um, uh, do quite as much due diligence in terms of the information they uh, have to provide the SEC and, and investors. So that will lower their cost of compliance a little bit. Uh, and then also investors can now purchase an undervalued stock. Um, I think and several other uh, uh, people have, have mentioned, including uh, uh, Seeking Alpha or whatever it's called, the, that I think we're looking at a $35 stock. Uh, within the next five years or so. So I think uh, $6.55 is a bargain. But anyway, let's talk about the road ahead. Uh, this is what Livewire needs to do and get done immediately. Uh, they need to lobby Congress to reinstate the EV incentives for Made in USA electric motorcycles. It was pulled out of the bill at the last minute. Uh, it needs to get done. Now, <clears throat> for those of you younger Viewers out there, you may not know this, but Harley Davidson has received uh, help from uh, Congress uh, several times in the past. Um, in in 1983, the Japanese motorcycle industry was dumping motorcycles on the United States below cost. Uh, they had overbuilt and over forecasted the number of motorcycles worldwide, and made a decision to dump motorcycles under cost in the U.S. market to gain market share. Um, Ronald Reagan uh, slapped tariffs on Japanese motorcycles over 700 cc's and uh, saved the company. Uh, Willie G said in subsequent interviews that, uh, that Reagan saved Harley-Davidson. I, I, I believe that's true. Uh, you might not be aware that in 2008 and 2009 when we had the Great Recession, uh, the Federal Reserve gave Harley $2.3 billion in bailout money by uh, purchasing uh, some of their uh, some of their paper, so uh, you know that was a giant bailout saved Harley again, and <clears throat> where we're at right now is uh, every time something happens on the world stage, uh, the retribution always comes to Harley Davidson because they're uh, they are associated as a very strong U.S. brand. So when uh, the Trump administration uh, slapped steel tariffs on Europe. They responded by putting uh, heavy tariffs on Harley-Davidson and um, uh, I think it was 30-40% tariff going into the EU. So uh, then what Harley tried to do is manufacture some of their foreign sold bikes in other countries and then the Trump administration came out and told everybody not to buy Harley-Davidson motorcycles. So you know Harley always seems to be right in the middle of uh, things like this and, and right now Harley needs to stand up and say that it's not reasonable that motorcycles uh, are left out of any incentives for electric vehicles in, in terms of the government's efforts to reduce CO2. Uh, other countries, especially China, are full steam ahead with uh, you know electric motorcycles and scooters and everything else, and the United States is making a huge mistake by uh, singling out a... Uh, a, a company that manufactures in Pennsylvania in a union shop uh, 130 miles from where Joe Biden uh, has a residence. So, I mean, there's just, it, it needs to be done. Harley needs to get it done. Uh, I've been watching closely. I haven't seen on LinkedIn uh, that they have uh, hired a replacement for the uh, director of government affairs that they lost just before this uh, latest uh, round of uh, electric vehicles and incentives went through. So that needs to be done. I mean, there needs to be a huge push to get that done because that will, uh, that will greatly benefit uh, companies like uh, Livewire and Zero. Maybe you can even get Zero to lobby with you. But um, it's, it's not reasonable that uh, electric cars are incentivized and buses and trucks and everything else, but motorcycles are not. It's just not... It's not reasonable. Uh, secondly, um, 
Livewire needs to activate social media uh, and, uh, and, 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 and their web showing. Uh, they have a very poor online president, presence and it's spooking investors and customers. When I read all the different things that analysts have to say and, and things like that, uh, the problem is, is that when they, when they take a look online and take a look at what's going on out there, uh, Livewire is doing very poorly. Uh, and then also top management needs to directly interact with customers and uh, potential customers uh, in an online uh, social media format. <clears throat> now, to give you a little bit of detail about what I'm talking about, uh, a lot of investors and a lot of analysts, when they look at companies, they look at things like their web traffic, their YouTube traffic, their Instagram accounts to see what kind of follow, following they get and what kind of buzz there is. So <clears throat> I picked up a um, web analysis tool where you can go into different websites and you can analyze uh, their viewer and their viewership. So here's four of them. I got Livewire, Zero, Energica, and Harley. Now, uh, Livewire has 217,000 visits per month on their website. They have a bounce rate of 58.82%. Now what that means is that means 58.82% of viewers look at the first page and leave. Okay, so that's called a bounce. If you just look at the first landing page and then leave, that's a bounce. So a high number is bad. Livewire's got 58.82%. Uh, pages viewed per visit on the Livewire account, it's, or Livewire website is 2.01 pages per visit. And the average duration uh, that somebody spends on the Livewire website is 48 seconds. Now, <clears throat> I don't know all the reasons why that those numbers are so bad, but I know that when I type in Livewire on a browser, I immediately get an ad or a link to click for Livewire where they take me straight to a page where they say I can get a Livewire for $299 a month and fill out the credit app here. I mean, that's that's stupid and that's silly and that's not how you sell motorcycles, obviously. Not, not how you market motorcycles, but that seems to be the, the web strategy. Uh, Zero, I went to their website and analyzed their, their thing. They have 598,000 viewers per month. They have a bounce rate of 36.6%, which is pretty good. Uh, 3.84 uh, pages per, uh, per visit, and average visit is two minutes and 11 seconds. So. You know, that's, uh, what, uh, five times more than Harley's getting? I mean, that's, or five times more than Zero's getting? That's, that's not, you know, that's, that's, that's awfully good. I mean, Livewire's got a lot more money, and it's got Harley Davidson behind them, and they're getting spanked on the internet by Zero, at least spanked on the, on the website. Uh, Energica, uh, Italian company, which also sells, uh, their largest market is actually California. But uh, they have 75,000 visits uh, per month, a bounce rate of 35.70, which is very, very good. Uh, 3.77 pages per visit, and the average viewer spends two minutes and five seconds on the page. So very similar to uh, zero. And then Harley-Davidson, uh, they've got 4.3 million views per month, a 45% bounce rate. 4.27 pages per visit, an average duration of three minutes and 26 seconds. So maybe Livewire needs to hire uh, Harley's uh, media company or web company and, and do something to uh, crank up uh, the, the volume. But I, I can tell you that, you know, I've mentioned this in other videos, uh, when I look at the pictures and the information on the Livewire website, I mean, it's just, it's just not not well done. It's not well done at all. It's the wrong audience. They don't give proper information. I mean, I've gone on and on about that in other videos, but this is what investors do. They push a few buttons. They see that Livewire's uh, online presence and traffic is down relative to even other electric motorcycle companies, and, and, and that's, a, that's a bad look. Uh, the next thing that investors look at is they look at what's being said in the press. So um, Livewire has two hand-picked reviewers uh, that they allowed to ride a Del Mar motorcycle. There's only two. One is Gideon Lynchfield, and the other is Micah Toll. So Gideon Lynchfield is the editor of Wired Magazine, <clears throat> and they gave him a test ride on a Del Mar. And he did a little review, and in the title of the, live, or of the Wired article, 
he says, sadly, it can't go the distance. Now, what he's referring to there is he lives in New York City, and he likes to uh, ride to the Hamptons, Hamptons on the weekend, and it's 95 miles away, and um, the uh, Del Mar can't make it. And uh, he doesn't want to wait, uh, you know, two hours for a charge to get there and then try and get two, two and a half hour charge to get back. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a concern. And, and it was not a good idea for um, Livewire to choose him to uh, do a review because he doesn't understand how to ride electric motorcycles. Uh, it wasn't explained to him that if he had ridden the bike down to 10 or 20 percent, he could have stopped the level two charger, uh, picked up lunch for half an hour, and gotten enough miles to uh, to make the 95 uh, mile trip even on the freeway. I mean, he doesn't understand electric vehicles, and apparently, uh, no one at Livewire explained it to him, and and they got that sentence. Sadly, it can't go the distance in the title of the article. So that was a big bomb. Uh, Micah Toll, he's the uh, founder and editor of uh, Electech, and um, he's just uh, he's just bashing um, Del Mar all over the place. He recently did a video about a Chinese motorcycle uh, called the CSC RX1E. What it is, it's a uh, it's a 400 pound electric motorcycle that comes from China and it's got 20 horsepower, and it's got a top speed of 80 miles an hour, and uh, if it's anything like the other CSC uh, motorcycles, uh, it's incredibly low quality, and um, you know, I won't say a piece of junk, but I won't even ride Chinese tires on a motorcycle on the freeway. I mean, anybody who does that is like out of their mind, and that's, that's just the tires. Never mind the rest of the motorcycle. But anyway, in the video that he did, he said, quote, the CSC RX1E looks like a great new option in the middleweight category. It may get smoked by a live wire Del Mar, but it will get smoked at half the price. What more can you ask for than that? So what more can you ask for than that? So he obviously... Mike Atoll thinks that uh, the price makes up for any shortcoming, and, and, and a guy like that is the wrong guy to give a motorcycle to like the Del Mar to test. Uh, Michael's background is bicycles, okay? That's, that's what he knows. Uh, his, his information is, is just, he's, he's not, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I appreciate that Micah uh, participates uh, in the comments on my videos sometimes, but I, I just really, I mean, he's the wrong guy. He doesn't understand motorcycles. He doesn't understand electric motorcycles. And making comments like this are very damaging. And if Livewire had done their homework, they would have known from previous things that he's written that this is not the right guy to give a ride to on a motorcycle. So the question is, who is the right person? And uh, one way I think live work get the right person is uh, they have a lot of reservations uh, for the uh, Del Mar motorcycle. Uh, they should get one of the reservation holders that maybe knows a lot about electric vehicles, maybe already has a live wire, and let them ride the bike and see what they have to say because they would be in a better position to talk about you know what the bike is like. But you know between uh, you know, the, the bad views on the website and the, when I say the website, the, the bad views on social media, low, when I say bad, I mean low viewership on YouTube, the website, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And the poor reviews that Del Mar is getting. Anyway, I'm getting all carried away, but the uh, bottom line is is that uh, Livewire needs to step back and reevaluate what's going on. Uh, Livewire's messaging is not connecting with customers. The, uh, the, the traffic on the internet is an indication of that. Uh, price, range, and charging speed are of paramount concern, and they are not being addressed by Livewire's marketing and sales departments. They're just not. It's not addressed on the website. It's not addressed on the face-to-face -face contact that customers are having at Livewire dealers. Um, it's one thing to be laser-focused on a strategy. It's another thing to run straight into a freight train. 
And I think that going forward with a SPAC, right after the government canceled EV incentives for motorcycles, and uh, at a time when the market was down and all the SPACs were having lots of trouble uh, trying to hold on to investor money, I think those things show bad judgment. So I think Livewire needs to step back. Uh, they need to think about what they're doing in terms of their marketing and sales, uh, what they're doing in terms of their uh, product features, and what they're doing in terms of their financing, and not be afraid to ask some hard questions and not just uh, you know pick a path and just run down the path no matter what happens. I think that this uh, SPAC should be a lesson that uh, things need to be looked at carefully, and you can't just go running uh, straight into a freight train. So, in closing, uh, I want to say that I've read you know hundreds of pages of SEC filings on Livewire, and um, I found another five secret features on Del Mar. So. Just so you know that I'm not making this up, on page 232 of Form uh, 40 or 424B3 of an SEC filing, they say, Livewire says, quote, the use of global navigation satellite systems will unlock a range of features like number one, location services, number two, geofencing, number three, advanced speed alerts, number four, crash detection, and number five, emergency calls. Now, out of all those, I like the crash detection and emergency calls a lot because I do uh, canyon riding and right up in the mountains, and sometimes people go off the cliff and um, not able to make a call for help. So uh, that would be a really cool feature, but it's, it's clear to me that uh, Livewire is a, a very a sophisticated motorcycle. Um, it's very advanced, especially in terms of software. And if you go to page 232, you'll find about a dozen more features beyond this five that they talk about in their SEC filing uh, that marketing has never mentioned. So with that, have a good evening.